Okay, so now I want to continue my game between the Elite and Zoskobrowski, played in 1907. So I just discussed um, White's 12, uh, 12th move of Rook to E1. And now um, Black plays Knight to C2, attacking both the Rooks. So White is forced to get rid of the Knight, but at the expense of its uh, best, best Bishop. So bishop takes c2, queen takes c2, and as we can see, black has a very firm grip on the c-file. White's pieces are uh, basically paralyzed without hardly any moves, so white decides to exchange its uh, um, inferior queen for, for black's definitely uh, superior queen. So queen takes c2, rook takes c2, and now... Uh, Still, black has a grip on the uh, C file. Um, white plays h3 to prevent uh, the move of knight to uh, g4. Black plays bishop to uh, d6. Obviously, it, it can go here, or here, and uh, the e7 square is more defensive, so even though it seems like black may be hitting a wall here of the pawns, uh, it definitely, if it's um, black, would have the option to uh, play to capture the knight now with well with the with the bishop on d6 if white de decides to play. Whoops! I think you knew what I was going after. If white decides to play the move e5, they could capture the knight. And now white's plan it it's going to play knight. Knight to b1 with the idea of playing it to uh, to uh, c3, hopefully trying to get some more activity and eventually trying to get rid of the the um, the rook here by playing also then um, moves like this. But uh, black plays knight d4 coming into an excellent post for the knight. And now um, white plays knight on f to d2 to basically attacking the knight. No real other choice. Black plays bishop to d3, saying, hey, if you take the knight on e4, I'm just going to replace it with the bishop, which uh, happens. So knight takes e4, bishop takes c4. And now white plays knight to d2 threatening to get rid of the bishop, and actually, if you don't know, both the bishop and the rook were hitting this pawn right here, so white needed to do something about that, so sort of blocks the bishop, uh, not the bishop, blocks the rook, and it threatens to take the bishop. And now, black plays king to d7. Uh, basically, there's no need to, for black to castle, because in the end game, we're almost in the end game now. The king should be come towards the center, or you know, should come out and be an attacking piece. So the king doesn't uh, black doesn't castle to put the king in the corner, but keeps the king in the center of the board where it's going to be more useful. So king to d7. Now white takes the bishop. The pawn retakes. And now. White plays rook to b1 with the idea of uh, playing uh, b4 and then and the bishop to uh, b2. But now black plays rook on h to c8, taking a firm grip on the c file. Black, uh, white continues with its plans of b4. But uh, black actually now has two excellent moves. It could play rook to a2. And then this rook down here would have two rooks on the seventh, and it'd just be devastating to white. But uh, here, black plays rook on eight to c3, going after the, uh, trying to go after the pawns over here. So, or maybe I should say the uh, the actual rule plan is that if white continues with bishop to b2, then the rook comes to here, threatening to win. The bishop, the bishop has to go to a1, and then white wins this pawn over here. And then this pawn right here on b4 will fall. So b2 
two is not possible, so first white plays king to f1 with the idea of playing the rook up to e2. Black plays king to c6. The idea is the king is now coming over to here to help so uh, attack these two pawns. It's going to take uh, part in the fight to win those two pawns. Once those two pawns go, black could easily promote one of these pawns. Now white can actually play bishop to uh, b2, and black plays rook to b3, and now move rook to e2 is forced to uh, protect the bishop a second time. That's why white played king to f1, remember. And now black takes on e2, e2. The king retakes. Now the king comes in. Notice how um, white cannot move either of these two pieces or it would lose them. So effectively these two pieces are paralyzed. So black can just roll the king in and help uh, uh, win these pawns. Now the white king tries to come over to protect and free its pieces, but it won't be able to. King to d2, king to a4, and now obviously white cannot come to c2, or even c1, because this pawn on e3 would fall. So it just sort of goes back. Personally, I would have moved a kingside pawn instead of moving the king back. The two, and now black plays a5, basically breaking up the pawns. With this one pawn, it's going to win both. So a5, king to f2. Once again, I said I would just leave, I would have left the king on d2 and moved my kingside pawns, and now. Black plays a, a takes b4, a takes b4 is um, forced, and now the king takes. If the king doesn't take, and neither the bishop or the rook take, then white can free its pieces by playing uh, um, rook to a1 check. So the king has to take to keep these two pieces paralyzed. Now the king, white's king comes over, basically uh, White's reduced just to making a bunch of king moves. And then king to b5. Once again, it doesn't want to go to either one of these two files because um, white would just give check. Or maybe I should say it doesn't want to go to any one of these squares, or white would just give check for the rook freeing its pieces. So the king moves back so that, the, so that this bishop can come in and attack this piece for a second time. King to d2, bishop to a3, threatening to win the bishop. Now the king has to come over. Now this is the winning move. This is basically simplification. Uh, Black sees that it has a, you know, a one. If you take all the pieces, the other pieces off the board, if you take these four pieces off the board, Black has a one king and pawn in game. So that's what it does. It just gets rid of the pieces, which is called simplification in chess. So now. Rook takes uh, um, b3. Actually, I should back up and say that um, it would be a mistake for black to actually play rook to e. Rook takes e3 because the bishop just goes, you know, discover check, king moves and take the knight, uh, take the rook. So simplification. I'm sorry. Going back to this position. The rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, king takes. Now this king comes to c4. Black is threatening to come in, eat the pawns on the king's side. So that's white's only move to defend. And I'm running out of time. So then b5. Basically, white will not be able to stop this pawn and defend these these in a the king from coming in. I think um, white resigned in this position because, like I said, it can't stop this pawn and protect its pawns, but uh, the game would probably continue something like g4, b4, h4, b3 check, king comes over to prevent the king from coming in, b2, 
king comes back, promotion, capture, king comes in, king comes over, and now you can see that this pawn is just going to run home, and then the game's over. So that was the game.